Today what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to write a, an equation for a quadratic in intercept form. Before we do that, I'm going to kind of review a basic graphing a question that we covered last class period. Say I ask for you to graph negative quantity x plus 5 quantity times x plus 7 quantity. Okay, in order to do that, we, we first did was we would identify that whether it opened up or down based upon the value in front of your parentheses, which is your a value. In this case, since it's negative, it's gonna, we know it's going to open down. And then what we would do is we would set each set of parentheses equal to zero and solve. Now what this will give us is this will give us our two x-intercepts, negative 5 and negative 7. We would then plot these two values on our graph, negative 5 and negative 7. And then we would add them together and divide by 2 to find the axis of symmetry. In this case, the axis of symmetry is at negative 6. Now, once we have done that, then what we would do is we would take that value and plug it back into our equation everywhere we see an x. So we're going to put a negative 6 in. So y is going to be equal to negative 1, basically, times negative 6 plus 5, times negative 6 plus 7. So it's negative 1. Negative 6 plus 5 is negative 1. Negative 6 plus 7 is positive 1. And a negative 1 times negative 1 times a positive 1 is just 1. That means that my y-intercept, excuse me, not my y-intercept, my vert vertex is at... 1, negative 7, 1. Now once we did that, we would complete our table. Okay, to complete our table, what we would do is we would pick some x values. So I picked 1 and 2, I square those, I get 1 and 4. I multiplied those by negative 1, I get negative 1 and 4. I wouldn't look at the middle column and I would do my transformation. Write 1, down 1, and then write 2, down 4. Now you can also find your y-intercept if you want it by putting in 0 everywhere you see x. But that would yield a y-intercept of negative 35, which is quite big. So we're not going to graph that at this point. So that is a review of how to graph an intercept form. So today what we're going to do is we're going to write the equation given a graph and then write an equation given only points. So first thing we need to do is we need to identify those x-intercepts from our graph. If you look at my graph I have here, this is negative 4, 0. And the value over here, if we're at negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, negative 7, negative 8, 0. Now I ask myself, how would I put that in parentheses to show my intercepts? So I know it's y equals a x minus one of my x-intercepts minus negative 8 becomes a positive 8. And then x minus my other x-intercept, which is 4, so it becomes a positive 4. Now the only other point I know from this is my vertex. You could pick any other point you wanted. It wouldn't have to be your vertex, but in this case it looks like it gives us the vertex. And the vertex is at negative 6, 1. Well that's kind of nice. I know that if I put negative 6 into the math problem, I should get 1 as an answer. So that's what I'm going to do. My y is going to be 1. A I still don't know. My x value is going to be negative 6. My other x value, once again, is going to be negative 6. You plug it in each and every time. 
So we get y, y, which is 1, is equal to a times 2 times negative 2. Well, 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. We divide both sides by negative 4. We get a equals negative 1 fourth. That will now give us all the information we need. Our original equation up here is y equals my a value, negative 1 fourth. And then it says two sets of parentheses, x plus 8 and x plus 4. Let's try one more given a graph. Okay, to start off this problem, we notice that it is opened up, which is nice. My x values again look to be negative once again, which is okay. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 6, negative 7, negative 8. So once again, I'm going to go ahead and put that information into my equation. So we have y equals a I don't know, x we can plug in, and if you want to skip some steps and combine them, that's fine. x minus 8 becomes x minus negative 8, which is a positive 8. x minus negative 6 becomes x plus 6. And now all I need to do is find one other point. It could be my vertex. It could be about any point you wanted it to be. I'm looking at this point right down here, which looks pretty nice and easy to tell. So that looks like that's at negative 7, negative 4. So now all I do is I take my equation. Everywhere I see an x, I'm going to put in negative 7. Everywhere I see y, I'm going to put in a negative 4. So negative 4 equals a... We're going to do x, which is negative 7, plus 8. And x again, negative 7, plus 6. So we get negative 4 equals a. Negative 7 plus 8 is 1. Negative 7 plus 6 is negative 1. We get negative 4 equals a times negative 1, divide both sides by negative 1, we get a equals positive 1 fourth. Now I'm a store and is it always going to be a fourth? No, it's just the luck of the draw. That's how the two problems were wrote. So my equation is y equals 1 fourth x plus 8 x plus 6. Now we can do this with or without a graph. So the next one I'm going to give you looks like this. It says, let your vertex be 1, negative 5, and your x-intercepts be 0, 0, and 2, 0. Write an equation in intercept form. So we start off just like before. We're going to take these two, and we're going to let x be 0 and x be 2. So x be 0 would just be x minus 0 or x plus 0. Okay. 2 would be x minus 2. We don't know what a is yet. We don't know what y is. We're going to take and put in our x and y value everywhere we see an x. We'll put 1 in. So we're going to put a 1 in here and a 1 in here. We're going to put a negative 5 in for y. So I get negative 5 equals a. 1 minus 0 is 1. 1 minus 2 is negative 1. Well, negative 5 equals a times negative 1. Divide by negative 1, we get a equals positive 5. So my equation, I take my equation I have back right up here, and say y equals my a value 5, x minus 0, x minus 2. Now, Ms. Storn, isn't x minus 0 the same thing as just x? Yes, so we can actually reduce that. We can say y equals 5 times x, which is 5x, times x minus 2. Let's try one more and we'll be done for the day. Last one I picked, not so nice. It has some wonderful fractions in it. So we start off the same way we did before. So we're going to say x is at 0, so x minus 0, 
x is at 2, so x minus 2. We don't know what a is, and we know y. Okay, so now we're going to do a little bit of math. We're going to have an answer as negative 6 and 1 eighth. A, we don't know what it is. 3 and a half minus 0. And then 3 and a half minus 2. So we have negative 6 and 1 eighth equals A times 3 and a half times one and a half. Okay, if you remember three halves is the same thing as saying seven halves because two times three is six plus one is seven. One and a half is the same thing as three halves because two times one is two plus one. We get 21 over four when we multiply those together. So we have negative six and one eighth equals a times 21 fourths. So we're going to divide by 21 fourths, which is the same thing as multiplied by the reciprocal. Now you can use a calculator for this if you struggle with fractions. I'm going to first change my negative 6 and 1 8 into a fraction that is improper. 8 times 6 is 48 plus 1 is 49. So we have negative 49 eighths. To divide by 21 fourths, we multiply by the reciprocal, which is 4 21sts. Now I'm going to save myself some time. I'm going to go ahead and reduce by cross simplification. I know that 8 and 4 are both divisible by 4. 8 is twice, 4 is once. I know 49 and 21 are both divisible by 7. We got 7 here and 3 here. So when I do the math and multiply across, I get a negative 7 times 1, which is 7. 2 times 3, which is 6. So negative 7, 6 is my A value. So my equation, my final answer, will be Y equals A, which is negative 7, 6. X minus 0 is just X, so I'm just going to put negative 6X and then X minus 2. I hope that this has been helpful. Now it's time for you to get started on your assignment.